you're listening to the CIP Podcast, the Study Abroad Cast, Season 5, Episode 5. I'm your host, Jane. I am currently a peer helper at CIP, and I studied abroad in Sweden in the winter semester of 2023 at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. In this show, we explore the world of study abroad, offering advice, insights, and travel stories, bridging perspectives and cultures along the way. Before we begin, I would just like to take a moment to acknowledge that this episode is being recorded at the University of Guelph, which resides on the treaty lands of the Mississauga of the Credit and lands that the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lunapaywak, and Wendat, Wendat people have inhabited for centuries. We understand that these lands are connected by the dish with one spoon wampum and continue to be home to diverse communities of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. Acknowledging the land reminds us of our commitment to reconciliation with Indigenous peoples and lands. In this episode, I'll be speaking about a unique exchange opportunity for Indigenous students, the Yanni Global Exchange Program at La Trobe University. This program allows Indigenous students to study abroad at an Australian school with a focus on Indigenous ways of being, knowing, doing, and learning by engaging directly with First Nations communities. Today on the show, we are pleased to welcome Charlie. To get started, Charlie, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you are doing here at Guelph this semester? I am a third year student at La Trobe. Um, So I'm I'm actually doing all of my electives, my third year electives um, at Guelph. So I'm not in any specific program. So I'm doing like a mix of classics, a mix of English and like history subjects while I'm here. Yeah. And it's so far, it's been really good. Yeah. That's awesome. Can you tell us about how you got involved with this program and kind of what it's about? Yeah. So I had a like kind of unique way of getting into it because I originally applied for the Trobe's general um, exchange. So anyone can apply for exchange. And I was actually not aware that there was an Indigenous specific exchange when I first applied. I found that mm. out kind of coincidentally and I was moved into that program. Um, once it was established that I was an Indigenous student. <laughs> um, but um, I found that it's been really, really helpful. Like, there was a lot of extra support given to us when we were applying. Um, and it was also good just to have other people, like, to talk to about, like, the process that we were going through and being able to connect with people like that. That's great. So for you, what were some of the advantages of participating in this program for Indigenous students? I know you mentioned like additional support. Are you able to like elaborate on any of that? Yeah, so we had um, more direct contact with the organisers of um, exchange Mm -hmm. programs at Latrobe. So we had like more one-on-one meetings with kind of higher ups just to go through the steps that we were going through. We had Mm -hmm we were given more opportunities kind of for financial support um, and how to access that. Yeah. And there were more just meetings. Like we have a specific Yanni advisor Mm -hmm. as well. So if we couldn't get a hold of the exchange organizers because they are very busy because they deal with hundreds of students, we did have someone that could answer usually within the day um, if we did Mm -hmm. run into problems. That's amazing. So I was just wondering, did you live on campus at La Trobe? And if you did, like, what is that like? Or do you live off campus? What is your experience? Again, bit unique. I did live on campus for a very, very short period in 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, But I didn't continue doing that because of COVID. And I actually ended up postponing starting my degree because of that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So this time around, when I started again in 2022, I didn't live on campus. I was commuting just because... I'm also autistic, so sometimes it's hard to be in, like, really loud environments where there is a lot of people. But when I did live on campus, it was mostly for orientation weeks Mm -hmm. um, rather than for classes. So I did enjoy that. There was a fair bit of, like, party culture, but, again, it was before class started, so that probably makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) It's like that orientation week kind of thing, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, Do you know, I know you said that the process that you got into this program was a bit unique, um, but in general, do you know much about the application process for this program? Um, Are you able to elaborate on that at all? Um, I think it is fairly similar to like the direct exchange pipeline that you would go through if you weren't an Indigenous student, but Mm. um, 
Yarny is a really new program. Mm -hmm. So we're the first group of students to actually participate in it. So I'm sure the process will be more streamlined as we go forward. But at the moment, I know that um, like if you just reach out to the Indigenous department, they'll like, be able to give you more information and like kind of point you down the right path of where to start with applications. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, it sounds like an amazing program so far. <laughs> do you yeah, have? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any advice for those considering studying at Latrobe through this program? For Guelph students? Yeah. I would say that so our degrees are actually structured differently. So a bachelor's oh, cool. degree is three years um, at Latrobe, and here it's four years. Mm-hmm. So I, when I enrolled, I was doing because I said I, as I'm doing my electives, they had to be year three electives or equivalent. So I enrolled in year three electives, but because of the difference in degree structure, the year three classes at Guelph are more like year two classes at Latrobe. Mm. Um, so I probably just consider that like where you are in your degree as to what you're applying to do. Yeah. Um, like if you're a third year student, you might want to look at second year subjects if you're going to go over and do them. Yeah, that's really useful advice. Thank you so much. That's that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, it was, really cool. I didn't really even consider it when I was looking at it. I didn't like yeah. realize it till I got here and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> For sure. Are your semesters structured similarly as well? Like, do you take one class at a time? Do you take like four classes at a time? Like, what does that look like? I take three to four classes at a time, depending on what I can handle. A full, like full time is considered four subjects. Okay. Um, and I think here five is considered full time. Yeah. Um, yeah, five subjects at Latrobe would be considered like overloading. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, cool. That's um, really interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know how exactly that transfers over. Like I'm not sure if Canadian students would still have to take five subjects. Um, because I know yeah. part of what happened when I applied was I was told I have to do the equivalent of full time in mm-hmm. like the Canadian institution that I'm in. So I'm doing four subjects while I'm here because that is my equivalent of full time. I don't know if that transfers over the same way because that's that's not a school requirement it's a government requirement yeah Um, that's interesting I find um, at least for like the exchange that I was a part of they did it just based on like the credit weights so like I only took two courses in Sweden but technically it transferred to like the same amount as like full-time credits right so I think it's that kind of same situation right yeah it sounds very similar yeah yeah it does (laughs) um I was just wondering do you have any like things that you'd like to add that I didn't ask you specifically or anything like that? I think if you like either for Australian students coming here or for Canadian students going there Mm -hmm. like just to travel as well so I've obviously don't neglect your schoolwork but (laughs) um like just take the opportunities that like you have while you're here so while I've been Mm -hmm. here I like went um out to New York on like Thanksgiving weekend. Amazing Um, what did you think? (laughs) It was it was really good. I love musicals. Um oh, so I was having a great time. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Um yeah, which you can't Australia's a bit more um decentralized, I guess, because we are an mm-hmm. island. Um mm-hmm. but there's still lots of things to like go and look at and I just yeah. If you are gonna go out, like just take the opportunities while you're there to like go and have a look around and see different things. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. It's a great opportunity to get to experience everything and make the most of your experience while you're abroad, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it's, you know, you're already here. You may as well use, take the chance while you have it. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I, I totally agree. And I yeah don't know if Guelph is like, like how much Yanni is actually set up in Guelph at the moment. Mm-hmm. The Indigenous department here has been super helpful. So they were actually also really large supports um so as soon as we were put as soon as we were put into the yani program Mm -hmm. we were put in contact with indigenous advisors at the institutions we were going to so i was put in contact with ali um who works at the indigenous student center at guelph and she's been super super helpful and yeah just being able to like have that sense of community there especially because you're removed from that um has been really good so yeah have you had the opportunity to get involved with any of the um like events and that kind of thing with the indigenous student center here yeah so i usually try to go to sharing circle every week Mm -hmm. um a lot of the events kind of like overlap with my classes 
Um, I yeah, I feel go, the same thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, I went to like a beading class. Amazing. Um, so that was fun. Mm-hmm. And I did start international, and mm-hmm. the Indigenous start ran kind of parallel to that. So mm-hmm. I wasn't registered with the Indigenous start, but I was still invited to like come to some of the dinners and stuff, um, which was really good, like helping adjust. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing to kind of have that sense of community when you're, you know, moving across the world, right? Feeling yeah. like you have some support and stuff can be really beneficial, make the transition smoother, right? Yes. I will just add, we do not do, well, I'm an art student. So my degree at home, I major in English and I have a double minor in classic studies and gender and diversity studies. Cool. I have never done an exam or a midterm. Um, wow. So adjusting to that while I'm here has been difficult. Yes, that's a very different experience. I assume you did a lot of like oral presentations and like um, that some, kind of thing or essays? A lot of essays. Okay. Yeah. Um, which if you like essays, excellent. I like doing essays, so I enjoy that. But yeah, yeah. like uh, adjusting to note taking and like having to prep for exams and midterms, I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is a lot. I haven't done an exam in six years. <laughs> oh my gosh, probably because of like since high school, right? Like yeah, yeah, for sure. That's it's definitely an interesting thing, like how education systems are so different. When I yeah. lived in Sweden, I had two exams, one at the end of each class, and that was it. Like there wasn't that like having to do the midterms and stuff so yeah it's a very different experience depending on where you go right yeah do you know how many people are doing this program this year um I'm just wondering like where they went and stuff there um was four of us in the program for I'm only here for a semester I'm not sure if they were going for a semester or for the whole year Mm -hmm. um but I'm the only one in Guelph the -hmm. other three students went to Calgary oh cool so because Latrobe has like established partnerships with a bunch of universities, mm-hmm. um, it's easier to go to those universities. Like if I'd wanted to go to like U of T, I could have done that, but it would have been extra steps because we don't have that established relationship. That makes sense. Um, but so Calgary, I think there is one in or like around Vancouver and Guelph are the ones we have in Canada mm-hmm. but Guelph was the only one that had like the arts programs um, oh interesting yeah Calgary was a lot of sciences yeah that makes sense that's, that's... so hopefully um we have still been like emailing our Indigenous advisor at home who mm-hmm. sorry like coordinates the Yani program mm-hmm. and she has been saying that there's like been a lot of interest for it so hopefully there'll be more people like in the next round of it because you do have yeah. to apply like a year in advance mm-hmm. yeah um, for sure I mean I know like part of this podcast is you know communicating that there's this kind of opportunity available and stuff um because I don't think yeah like you said it's a new program so I don't know how many people really like you know know about it and that kind of thing so hopefully no exactly kind of, like, it's promotion um, will help you know part of why we were asked to like you know, if we are given opportunities, take them so that people can know about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all for today's episode of the Study Abroad cast. Don't forget to explore your own study abroad opportunities on the CIP website, uaguelph.ca backslash CIP, or follow us on Instagram at CIP underscore Guelph. Thanks for listening. And thanks, Charlie, so much for sharing your advice, um, insights and travel stories. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we look to unpack the study abroad experience even further. 